we're gonna roll up our sleeves and plant some apple seeds. What I wanna do is just talk about like kind of the evolution of how I used to do it, how I'm doing it now. I don't have it really figured out yet, but uh, yeah, we'll just talk about those things in general, how to do it, how you might wanna do it, things I'm trying, whether they're working or not. One thing I did different this year is I dried all of the seeds, uh, the seeds that I planted as well as the seeds that I sent out. Now, usually I'll just, you know, I rinse the seeds after I take them out of the apple. I let them dry on the surface of the seed, but I don't let the seed itself dry out. And then I'll put them in a, a Ziploc bag like this with nothing in it, just dry. And then I'll leave them in there. So I figure, you know, because they're still fresh, they're going through the vernalization process or the chilling process. So what that means is that the apple seeds need to spend a certain amount of time being cold. So they think they've gone through a winter. So they think it's time to grow. So they need to be cold for a certain amount of time. So I figured, you know, they're going through that chilling process because the seeds are already fresh. Now, if the seeds are dry, that doesn't work. And then what I would do is I, you know, in the, in the early years, I was so excited about the project that I wanted to plant them as early as possible. And I would plant them like, you know, in January in this unheated greenhouse where it's, you know, it's not, it never freezes in here, but it's, it's plenty cold to chill things. You know, they got any chill time they had in the fridge, plus they're still chilling in the greenhouse. But over time, as I became less excited about the project, I would just, I just keep forgetting to plant them early. And so I'll plant them late. It turns out that they can enter a second dormancy if they get too warm and they haven't sprouted yet. So the seed could be all soaked up, but if it gets too warm, it'll say, oh no, it's too warm, it's too hot, it's too late to sprout, and it'll go back into dormancy, and then you have to go back through the chilling cycle again. And I think that's probably why I've had a couple of years where I planted very late that had very poor germination. So this year, what I did is I dried them all, and then I re-soaked them in compost tea for like overnight, and then I put them into bags with this powdery rotten wood is what I ended up using this year. I've used charcoal in the past. I've used sawdust. I don't think it matters too much. I do like this punky rotten wood. It was just like a a rotten alder tree in the forest and I grabbed some of the super soft stuff you could break up in your hands and I rubbed it through a screen so it's really fine and that's worked really well. And it's very damp but it's not soggy. And I think it's been about four weeks now. I've already planted quite a few of them and I've just been planting them as they sprout. This apple germination just seems pretty much all over the place. Some varieties just do not want to sprout and they'll just sit there forever. You know that presents a problem for me because if I plant them out here in the greenhouse, that's definitely a problem because it's going to get too hot and they're going to do that secondary dormancy thing. You know, I need to plant them at some other place, but even at some point, the air temperature is just going to be so high that that's going to be a problem. I feel like this year what I should have done is, is like as soon as the seeds were ready, I would pick out the seeds that I wanted and soak them and get started. But that's kind of difficult to do because I wanted to have all the seeds together so I could look through them and see what I wanted to grow. So at this point, I'm thinking maybe at some point soon, I'm just going to plant them all, put them outside maybe and cover them. I also thought of like digging a pit so that they're kind of like down in the ground, but they still get light. Maybe put a piece of shade cloth over it and try to sprout them down there where it's cooler. So here we have Cherry Crush X Black Strawberry. Now I'm trying to keep up with these, but sometimes they'll grow pretty long roots. And if they grow a long root, you just poke a deep hole, you know? And it looks like pretty much all of these have sprouted. So I have one row here already. That's uh, Pink Parfait X Pink Lady. Boy, that could, that could really produce something good. So the next row is gonna be right here. I plant them pretty close together because they're going to get moved out of here, hopefully. I mean, the idea is to move them out of here pretty early. I don't always get to it, but I think like an inch and a half apart is probably pretty good. If there's a lot of this like white root and stem showing, I want as much of that as possible buried. If it's really, really long, sometimes you can't bury it and you can leave some of it sticking out. But I prefer not to see any of that white root uh, slash stem so yeah, this is basically a strawberry flavored apple and a cherry flavored apple crossed together. Sounds pretty good, huh? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. It looks like it maybe all of these sprouted of this cross, which is great. Good news, I really hope everything in here sprouts soon. And I've planted these things when they had just really long, long roots. 
you just poke a really deep hole and try to fit them in there. Did I have just the right amount of holes? Heh, look at that, it's perfect. How many was that? It was like one, two, three, four, maybe 10 or 11. The all important label. Uh, when I sent out seeds this year, I tried to send, I tried to remember to send instructions with every order. If I didn't, I'm sorry. I really try hard to remember, but I'm honestly not very good at fulfilling orders. It's not something that I have a natural talent for, <laughs> I guess. I seem to make quite a few mistakes, even though I try not to. And I think I'm not making mistakes. What was I saying? I don't remember. C crush X B S. Next line's gonna be right there. Just gonna mark these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I wouldn't want them any closer than that. That's pretty close. Let's see who else is sprouting here. Now it's kind of a hassle because I'll have a bag where there's just a couple of sprouting and I'll have to plant those two and then put a tag and I just end up making a lot of tags and having to go back and into the bags over and over again. But it is already getting warm. So if I plant all the seeds in these flats, I mean, maybe that secondary dormancy thing would kick in and then I'd be screwed. And, and this has happened to me before, so a little gun shy on that. For instance, in that one, I only see one seed that has sprouted, but there's only three seeds left here. And I'll look real carefully at the end of the seed to see if it looks like it's sprouting. If there's even a little white dot there where the seed's starting to poke out, then you're good. As soon as it breaks dormancy and starts to grow, it's game over, like it's gonna grow. But these three seeds are not doing that, so I ended up planting one seed. I have to tag that with a separate tag. See what I mean? It's kind of a pain, but you know, I just think that's the way it needs to happen this year. And that one that did sprout had a huge long root, so if I left that for another week, you know, or two, that root could get out of control. What else we got here? I see at least one in here that's sprouting, possibly two. Golden Russet X Wixen, hell yeah. Okay, so the last one was Williams Pride X Appaloosa, WP App Apostrophe Usa. Next, Golden Russet X Wixen. Super excited about this cross. I just think this has great potential. Mark my words, you'll see. Someday you'll be, I'll be like, see, I told you. I told you, suckers. Nobody believed me. They said growing apples from seed was stupid. Who's stupid now? But sometimes if, if they've been sprouting really well, like this variety, there's one seed left that's not open. You know, I might just go ahead and plant it. And actually I can see that it's busting out on the end there. So we're good on this one. And that's the last seed of those. I already planted a bunch like a week ago, which are now coming up right there. Golden Russet X Wixen. There's one, two, three, four, five coming up right there. Hells yeah. Oh wait, there's one more. We'll just plant that one too. Hope for the best. It'll probably come up. There's at least one sprouted in there. Sometimes if there's only one sprouted and it's not very long, I'll just leave it and hope, you know, maybe in a week more of them will be sprouted again. It just saves me from writing more extra tags. Oh, this is says unknown, so I probably won't even grow that. Yeah, but like this one has one sprouting with one small root, so I'm gonna leave that for next week. About, I do this about once a week, uh, maybe a little bit more often. Okay, so this one has at least two, so I'm gonna go for it. And this is Viking X Wittic Pippin. So this is two highly flavored apples with very complex fruity flavors, which I'm partial to. And I'm convinced that if we just pile those genes up on top of each other over and over, we're gonna get some amazing, super strong flavored apples. So Viking X Wit Wick. Now something interesting about Viking is that it was part of a breeding program to breed scab-free apples, and it was so good that it's the only scab-susceptible apple that didn't turn out to be scab-resistant out of the trials that they actually kept and named and released because it's just really good. In this case, I have three seeds, they're not sprouted. There's a really good chance that if I planted these right now, and you know what, I have three spaces left, I'm gonna go for it, but I think it would be safe, a lot safer for me to just uh, leave them until they sprout in the fridge. It's supposed to cool off again in a day or two. All right, so that's what I'm doing this year. If you're a total apple nerd, 
you can uh, keep watching this video and I'm just going to keep planting seeds and nerding out about apples and talking about these crosses as I plant them. Just, you know, for the super nerds out there like me. Unfortunately, all these Becca crosses just didn't make it. I've had a lot of trouble with those. Okay, so Appaloosa X Viking. We have two apples with very strong, complex, fruity flavors. And one of them is red flesh and one has traces of red flesh, as if I recall right. That's the other reason I'm interested in using Viking. Let's see how many seeds are in here. I think there's only one left. Yep, there's only one seed and it, it's uh, sprouted out here. Okay, Pinker Lady X Appaloosa. Here we have a pretty mild flavored, very delicious, don't get me wrong, very delicious, but somewhat mild flavored pink fleshed apple and pinker lady with great genetics. And we have a slightly more primitive, but stronger flavored and more red fleshed apple in Appaloosa. Now, so this is a cross between two of my seedlings. They also have two different red flesh parents. So Appaloosa is a grenadine cross. Yeah, Pinker Lady is a cross of Rubiot. So Pink Pink Lady and Rubiot. I don't forget which way. I think it's Pink Lady X Rubiot, but I'm not sure. So I'm hoping that, you know, Appaloosa will bring a little more flavor and a little more red flesh to the table. And Pinker Lady will bring just the refinement. It has nice texture. It's huge too at least as far as seedlings go that I get. So the parents of all of those together are interesting too. Pinker Lady, Pink Lady X Rubiot, and Appaloosa is Grenadine X Lady Williams. And Lady Williams is actually one of the, you know, ancestors of Pink Lady. So really that's kind of a back cross to Lady Williams in a way. So that's also very interesting. Another reason I wanted to make that cross. And we have Golden Russet X Ashmead's not sprouting yet. It looks like at this point, most of the bags have something sprouting in them. This has at least one, but it's very small. So I'm gonna leave that for a week. Wixen X Rubiot. Okay, this is one of the crosses I'm most excited about. I was gonna keep 50 seeds of this this year. That's what I wanted to do. And then once I got through picking all my seeds out, I counted them and there were 725 seeds. And I was like, that is insane. Even I'm not that crazy. So I went back through them and I got rid of 10 seeds. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, reality check for real. And I went back through them and got down to 355 seeds. So I ended up keeping 20 of this cross, but originally, yeah, I was gonna keep 50. That's how promising I think this cross is. And I made 110 seeds, I think, this year, about, something like that. So I also sent out a ton of those for everyone else to grow out. And I, I'm telling you, out of that one batch of seed, we're going to see a bunch of amazing stuff. Because I already have two named apples out of this cross. Out of only I've only grown three seedlings, and two of them are already named and released. I would say a very high percentage, maybe 50%, are probably going to be worth growing. And I, th I think it's going to be like that where certain crosses or certain parents are just going to yield a high percentage of good fruits. And uh, I think it's really good to identify those. I was talking with someone in the comments about doing like a kit for schools where they could grow apples from seed. And it'd be really cool to be able to supply some seed that had, you know, a really good chance of producing good stuff. Where if they grow out like five seeds, they're probably going to get something really, really good. And I think that Another parent that way is going to be uh, William's Pride. What do we got here? Pink Parfait X Cherry Cox. So once I found out that Cherry Cox could impart the cherry flavor to its offspring, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Let's plant more of that. Okay, so I got some seeds that failed here. Actually, some of these seeds were from last year. They were still in the fridge and they were sprouting in the fridge from last year. And so I planted them. There they are. Do a lot more crosses with using cherry cocks because that flavor, that cherry flavor is really outstanding. And Pink Parfait is just a really great apple. So it's kind of like the base canvas and I'm trying to inject that cherry flavor into it. And maybe some other complex flavors because cherry cocks is a very complex flavored apple. It is Cox's orange pippin. It's just slightly mutated version uh, called a sport. I thought this was going to be a pretty quick job, but it turns out a lot of these are sprouting. So I have a feeling within the next three weeks, I'm really going to 
end up planting most of these, which is good. I want them growing as soon as possible. Okay, so in this case, there's only two seeds. There's only one seed left that's not sprouting, so I'm just gonna plant it. I use Pink Parfait a lot. This is crossed with Wittig Pippin. Wittig Pippin and Pink Parfait are both late hanging apples, so I'm doubling up on that. Uh, Pink Parfait is absolutely delicious and wonderful, but it doesn't have any really strong flavors in it. The closest is sometimes it'll have a very strong honey flavor. Very specific to like, not kind of honey-like, but actually tastes like, you know, wildflower honey. Wittig Pippin, I'm hoping, will bring some more complex flavors into the mix. And again, they're both late hanging apples, so I'm hoping to double up on that. Okay, there's a whole bunch here. This is Chestnut X Golden Russet. Now that, that could be really good. I'm excited about that. As a group to kind of pollinate together and work with, I think Chestnut Crab, Golden Russet, Court Pindu Plat, and Pine Golden Pippin occur to me as like a group you could kind of work within to get some pretty interesting new russets. I mean, I wouldn't say chestnut is really a russet, but it, I I call it russet leaning. I don't even know what I mean by that, but these two seeds aren't really sprouted, but I'm gonna plant them anyway. Come on, seed, grow, make daddy happy. If I ever actually run out of these printing plates for tags, I, I'm gonna be lost, just absolutely lost. I'll fall to my knees and scream I'm not gonna make it. That's from a movie. Wonderful movie. Very heavy, heavy movie though. So called uh, Lilia Forever by Lucas Moodyson. Love Lucas Moodyson. He did Show Me Love, Lilia Forever, We Are the Best. Oh, that's so good. Great movies. A lot of coming of age movies. I like those. Okay, that was the apple that may get named this but I don't like saying it because then everyone will start using it and they'll be like, hey, when are you releasing da-da-da? And I'll be like, well, that's not really the name yet. Okay, Williams Pride X Centennial. Williams Pride is just possibly the best early apple overall. And it seems to throw good progeny, which is great. We want that. And Centennial is a pretty famous apple amongst apple connoisseurs. You know, it makes it onto favorite apple lists. Uh, I know Chris Mannix loves it. I've only tasted it two years, and last year it really was pretty good. The first year it was kind of like, didn't really develop right or whatever. It just seemed really promising. So I started breeding with it as soon as I got it to flower, even I hadn't tasted it yet, on reputation alone. But it's also very early. So we basically have two high quality early apples, but one is tiny with crab genetics, and one is huge and scab resistant and totally different. So who knows what they're going to make. I have a feeling it's going to be interesting. It's like breeding a Great Dane with a Chihuahua. Who knows what it's going to make, but it's fun to watch. Okay, now here's an example of one that's really well grown. The leaves are already coming out up here. Very long root, and we're just going to poke a big old hole, make it all wide and big like that gently poke this down there into place try to cover all the white stem and in two days that thing's going to look like these but i planted some pretty crazy long ass roots before and you don't have to have them straight down you can kind of curl them up in there and whatever works and in this bag there are only two seeds left and so i'm just going to plant them i use williams pride a lot because it's such a good parent it's throwing really good progeny and it is scab resistant on top of it so this is the uh, Williams Pride with my musky flavored apple. We'll see how that does this year. I'm really hoping I get a lot of fruit. It definitely is flowering this year. I'm just gonna write musk so you can't figure out what the name is and then start using it prematurely. Learn my lesson on that. Okay, here we have Pinker Lady X Pink Parfait. We have two pink fleshed apples which have like a lighter pink flesh. Also, both of these have a mild strawberry flavor. Pink Parfait, it's very, very subtle. Like you can usually barely pick it out, but I think it, when it has a berry flavor, it does tend a little bit towards strawberry. In Pinker Lady, it's more pronounced and it's very similar to the, it, the flavor of black strawberry, which is a sort of like mild artificial strawberry type of a flavor. Pretty cool. Like I'm definitely, you know, anything that has that flavor, I want to double up. So 
I'm doing black strawberry, pink parfait, pink parfait, pinker later, pink pinker lady black pinker lady black strawberry, all those things. I don't see any roots on that yet. That's Wixen X Golden Rust that I'm more interested in the cross going the other way. And I'm not even sure why. It's just kind of like instinct or something. It seems like it's better to put Wixen onto Golden Russet, maybe because what I really want is a, a savory russet. I mean, I'll take a, a Wixen-like apple with the flavor of Golden Russet. It could be absolutely amazing. But the real goal is, or thought, is kind of a, a savory russet. And so I just have a feeling if I use Golden Russet as the seed parent, I'll tend to get something more like it, but hopefully with the savory flavor. And you will savor the flavor when that thing comes out. And you're going to be like, holy crap, Stephen is a horticultural genius. And I'll be like, nah, well, maybe. Sorry, Amber Wine, X Wixen. So this, in a way, this might be a back cross to Wixen because Amber Wine is Williams Pride X Vixen, which is the closest thing to like a large Wixen and obviously related to Wixen. Very likely it comes from Wixen, but it could also be from the same seed batch. Uh, it's an Albert Etter apple. And then it's crossed back to Wixen. So anyway, we have two savory apples crossed together here. That could be... Uh, quite promising. This is Whitwick Piven X Rubiot. So we have two very flavorful complex apples. Um, one of them is a light hanging apple. One of them's not. Just, I really want to use Whitwick Pippin and other really strongly flavored apples in general. But I think anytime we cross those with Another strongly complex flavored apple, such as Rubiot, which is kind of a berry flavored apple. There, there's likely to be some kind of a synergy and we're gonna get even more super flavorful apples. And then we can take those and cross them with say another apple that's a cross between two completely different super flavorful apples. Just keep piling them up generation after generation. And what we're gonna end up with is gonna be totally nuts. Hopefully I'll still be alive by the time there's like, that really comes to fruition, literally. But either way, it's gonna happen, as long as someone does the work. And I think someone's gonna, because there's so many people that are excited about doing this now. Looks like we have a lot sprouting in here. This is Rubiot X Pink Lady. I'm, I'm interested in using Pink Lady in general because it really is, I think it's a really good apple and it's very late. Like it'll hang here past New Year's sometimes. Like this year, it, was, it hung past New Year's into February, and it was delicious. Better than you can get it in the store, more flavorful. I just think it needs to be used more. So that's what I'm doing. Of course, this is a cross with a red-fleshed apple, so hopefully we could get something like Pink Lady that has red flesh and is ripe in the winter. All right, here we have Pink Parfait X Wixen. Uh, this is like one of those cross Wixen with everything. That's all that is. So I'm liking the level of germination I'm seeing in these seeds. Most bags have something in them that's sprouted. Some of them are finished already. Looking pretty good. I kind of want to count these too to see where I'm at because it'll give me an idea of how much more flat space I'm going to need. So this is my new red fleshed apple which I have a great name for, but you don't get to know it yet. Everyone keeps asking me. I'm like, nope, not yet. And it is so good and so promising that I'm planting open pollinated seeds. I don't, basically don't use open pollinated seeds, meaning that they're pollinated by bees. You know, I want to know exactly what both parents are. But this apple was so good and promising, and I want to breed with it as soon as possible. So I decided to grow out the seeds I had. Here, you don't get to see the name though. And guess what? I went out yesterday to look at the tree and I didn't see any blooms. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna bloom this year at all. So that means I won't even get to try the fruit again for another whole year and I don't get to breed with it at all this year. I have to wait for the next year. What a drag. I may get lucky and if I could just get a few blossoms like you know, three blossoms, I can do a lot of pollinating with that. But not a ton, you know, and like, I make a list of everything I want to do, like all the crosses I want to make. And I made that list already this year, and it's long. And almost every apple I'm using 
I was like, oh yeah, I cross it with the new red flushed apple. And now I'm not even gonna have any pollen. So that makes me extra happy that I decided to grow these seeds out, basically is what I'm saying. There's like, I don't know, seven or eight seeds here. This is black wine sap ex Appaloosa. Um, I, I haven't grown black wine sap before. This is the first year it ever fruited. The fruit was not very good. I wasn't impressed at all. It may just not do well here or it might not be good, I don't know. But I really wanted to do some crosses with more of the, like, you know, what are called black apples, which just means they're super, super dark red. And just see what happens. Um, so I went ahead and made a few crosses and I just saved a few seeds of each. I think I did a black strawberry and black wine sap and black wine sap x Appaloosa. And this is Sunrise x Rubiot. Sunrise is just a nice canvas of an apple. And I really would like to grow an apple like it with red flesh and a lot more flavor. You know, Rubiot seemed like a good parent to use. I have actually a pretty good feeling about that cross. Cool. So there's a bunch of empty bags. I'm going to assume that there's 10 per row here, which is pro approximate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times ten is a hundred. Great. So if I have a hundred seeds there and close to a hundred in here, maybe ninety, that's a hundred and ninety out of three hundred and fifty. So I'm closing in, you know, if I do this big flat right there, I might finish the rest of them. Hopefully within a, a couple weeks. Two or three weeks, all of these will have sprouted and gotten planted. And I'll probably will just, if there's any left, I said, I'll probably do some kind of experiment. Like I said, dig a pit or something, trying to keep them a little bit cooler while they sprout. Four or five to like 10 years, we'll be tasting these apples. If all, if all goes well and I get my new homestead and get them all planted and who knows what could happen between now and then. But that's the plan. See you then. So here's the new super awesome red fleshed apple. And like these are fruiting spurs, but they didn't make fruiting buds. So you'll see these things and you know, it looks like they're gonna make flowers. Is that one gonna flower? But then they don't. So I'm just hoping that just a couple of these decided to flower, but it, you know, from what I've seen so far, it doesn't look good. And I have a feeling I'm not gonna get any blooms at all. Like I said, if I can just get a couple, I can get some pollen and do some pollinations, but that's probably not gonna happen. This is gonna be a nursery bed of four rows of apple trees planted a foot apart. Trees I'm gonna dig up and take with me, hopefully within a couple of years, uh, three at the most, you know, past that it's just not gonna work out too good. So I'm kind of gambling, but uh, these are gonna be the seedlings from last year for the breeding trials. Trees of my very best seedlings, the ones that, that are the most promising, amber wine, cherub, black strawberry, Appaloosa, etc., And also the trees you know, the heirlooms and other apple varieties that I use for breeding, that I really want to keep, you know, using in breeding work. So I want to have trees that are well established. These are going to be on dwarfing rootstock, so they could start fruiting within a few years of being planted. And they're already going to be, you know, a couple years ahead. I'll start training them in the rows here. I'll use them also for train, tree training experiments to just confirm what I already think I already know in terms of like the training system that I use. So uh, I'm going to go take a quick nap and then that's what I'm doing today. String lines, dig trenches, and start planting trees. 150 of them.